we can think of derivatives and integrals as being linear transformations as well. So if you recall from the definition up here of the linear transformation, linear transformations satisfy this, basically that you can split it up at uh, places where you're adding, and you can also factor out um, constants. If you think about it, derivatives work the same way. You know, if you're taking the derivative of the function f of x plus g of x, you know, you can split that into derivative of f plus the derivative of g. And similarly, if you take the derivative of some constant times a function, you can bring that constant out front and just do that times the derivative. of the function. And you do that kind of, you do those steps all the time when you take the you know you take the derivative of say 3x squared plus 2x plus 5. you know you do that almost without thinking. you just get what 6x plus 2. I guess technically we're getting 6x plus 2 plus 0. But anyway, uh, those are the same, uh, these rules are the same as these uh, requirements over here. So we can consider the differential operator and also the integral, taking the integral of something. Both of those are linear transformations. A good question, I guess, is um, from what to what? And we can do a couple of different uh, things there. The differential operator, you, we can think of it as it's a function that maps c to c, where c is the set of all continuous differentiable functions. So, you know, it's going to include polynomials, um, uh, root functions, it's going to include all the trig functions and things. So, um, you know, th what this says is. Um, the set of continuous differentiable functions, those actually form a vector space. Now, if we look at, uh, down here in 2, this is another thing we could say. The differential operator maps polynomials to polynomials. And that's true because uh, polynomials, uh, the set of all polynomials, P, is a subspace of C. So, um, and it's closed under, um, it's closed under, um, the differential operator. Um, interesting thing here, uh, C and P, both of those are infinite dimensional vector spaces because the set of all polynomials, there's no limit on what the what the degree is. And up here we've got all the polynomials plus a bunch of other things. So both of those have infinite dimension. This one down here though is a finite dimensional one. We could uh, say that uh, ddx maps pn, that's the polynomials with degree at most n, to the polynomials with degree at most n minus 1. So that one is uh, finite dimensional, because if you look at the set of all polynomials of uh, degree n and less, that's going to have a dimension of n plus 1, because you're going to get one dimension for, um, you'll get one for x to the n, one for x to the n minus 1, for these coefficients down to x to the 1. Then you've got the constant here, x to the, something times x to the 0. So you wind up with n plus 1 um, coefficients there, and so your, um, your uh, dimension of pn is going to be n plus 1. So what does this say down here? In 1 and 2, the vector spaces are infinite dimensional, so we can't represent them as matrices. But this one down here, if we pick a specific value of n, we can represent that with a matrix. And I want to just kind of write that out here. Let's look at uh, let's look at this one mapping polynomials degree three or less to polynomials degree two or less. All right. Um, here's how you do that. The derivative of, or, or what I want to do here is pull out the matrix that would work for this. So let's see. Um, just a general polynomial of degree three would be something like this: ax cubed 
plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And when you take its derivative, what you get is 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c. So if we want to write this as a, using a um, using a matrix, first up, let's rewrite this instead of writing it as something from P3. Let's rewrite it as something from R4. It'd just be A, B, C, D. And if we come over here and rewrite this as something from R3, we'd have 3A, 2B, and C. So what we need here is a matrix that maps A, B, C, D to 3A, 2B, C. All right. So this top row here, if I'm trying to figure out what needs to go here, it's gonna, we're gonna take that and multiply it by, you know, take this, multiply it by this, and get this. So if you think about what needs to go there, it's just three times A, plus zero times B, plus zero times C, plus zero times D. Then to get the two B, we do zero A, two B, 0, C, 0, D. And then to get the C, we have 0, 0, 1, 0. So that's the matrix that we would use for this, or that we use to represent it with. Oh. That's pretty much it. So anyway, you can think of uh, derivatives and integrals as being a linear operator. All right, and that uh, that pretty much uh, finishes this uh, this uh, this section.